Show of hands, how many of you have ever seen a mascot at a theme park or a restaurant and thought, yeah, no thanks? Maybe it wasn't even meant to look creepy, but still, there it is, staring into your soul with lifeless eyes. You're not alone. As a concept, mascot horror has been around for a long time. It seemingly has no clear beginning, and it's just one of those things that happened, initially by accident, and then later intentionally. Originating is something that was meant to be cute or funny. People soon realized that it had a lot of potential failing to be cute or funny. And thus, the nightmare fuel began. Eventually, it also found its way into the video game world. For those of you who don't know what mascot horror is, let me enlighten you. As the name implies, it takes innocent mascots created for children and subverts them into something sinister and dangerous. Imagine a buddy back here turned into a vicious killer with the looks to prove it. <laughs> This is a concept that has been around for about as long as mascots have existed, even before it was given a name. There are numerous pictures from years and years ago to back this up, unfortunately. As a concept in the gaming world, it was more of a rare occurrence to begin with until its recent surge in the mid-2010s. Most of you probably already know what I'm talking about, but we'll get to that later. Before it became a popular genre, mascot horror was something that would only show itself in the form of certain characters in certain games. It would rarely be a game's main focus and would thus only be seen seen in the video game world occasionally. One of the earlier and most well-known examples of mascot horror in video games that aren't explicitly focusing on it as a main character or a genre is Silent Hill 3. In the game, we're introduced to Robbie the Rabbit, a mascot for an amusement park. With the design originally meant to be cute and friendly, as he's a pink smiling rabbit, this is quickly turned into something a lot more creepy thanks to the blood around his mouth and the dilapidated state of his surroundings. Another example is Dead Rising 2, where one of the enemies is Slappy, a mascot for a kid's clothing store. Wearing bright colored clothing, sporting a propeller hat, and walking around with a big grin, it's clear that he's supposed to be friendly and fun that he definitely comes off as creepy. As previously stated, this concept requires the mascot to initially be innocent, as if created for kids. There are plenty of characters that can be considered evil mascots, but Darth Vader or the Minecraft Creeper don't exactly fit the bill. Due to this, the list used to be pretty short, as it was seen as a character trope that only occurred occasionally, rather than something that could shape a genre. But one game would come along and change this forever. In 2014, a game using mascot horror as its main focus point was released. Five Nights at Freddy's came in and took the gaming world by storm. In this game, you take the role of a security guard trying to survive over the course of five nights by keeping pizza restaurant mascot animatronics away from your office. At the time, this was unlike anything people had ever seen. The gameplay was unique, the game was truly scary, and the antagonists were like someone had finally taken Chuck E. Cheese's demonic vibes and turned them into something entertaining. With the concept working out better than the game's creator Scott Cawthon had expected, the sequel Five Nights at Freddy's 2 was released just a few months later in the same year. Keeping up with the hype, he released the third game just a few months later again, and same with the fourth game. Despite, or maybe thanks to, the tightly scheduled releases of these games, the ball was kept rolling. The franchise faced massive success, something that would keep going for years and is still ongoing. Among the YouTuber success, book releases, a movie deal, and the sea of official and knockoff merch, one thing was clear. This was a profitable venture, with the crown jewel being the characters. These mascots were remembered and loved even by kids who had never gotten to play the games themselves. And so, other developers took note and decided they wanted a bite. Was that the bite of 87? After the overwhelming success of Five Nights at Freddy's, fans who felt inspired by the concept of mascots, more specifically the idea of sentient animatronics, wanted to give it a try. Thus, the fan games were born. Obviously, just making use of mascots and jump scares wouldn't lead to overnight success. And in order to find the good games, you also had to sift through a lot of bad ones, or even ones created as a meme. Some of these fan games did end up garnering their own fair share of attention, with some examples being The Joy of Creation, Five Nights at Candy's, and Tealerland. But these are 
are just three of hundreds, if not thousands, of additions to the list of fan games. Outside of fan games, mascot horror as a genre came to grow. This may or may not have been influenced by Five Nights at Freddy's, we truly don't know. But to say the FNAF brought the genre into the spotlight and showed people that it was something worthwhile is definitely not an understatement. In 2017, a few years after the release of Five Nights at Freddy's, a different type of mascot horror game, but still a popular one, by the name of Bendy and the Ink Machine was released. Rather than being a point-and-click horror game in which the player character is virtually helpless, this was a game which included combat and puzzle mechanics, and the big bad you face off against is the Mickey Mouse-inspired cartoon character Bendy. Releasing in chapters over the course of a year and a half that all garnered quite a lot of attention from content creators, the first chapter was seemingly the most successful one. The franchise was eventually criticized by some for being repetitive and frustrating and a cash grab, but was so widely popular due to its art style and its recognizable mascots. A game that's inching on the border of mascot horror and that also grew quite popular is Baldi's Basics, a game parodying edutainment games. The titular character Baldi is initially meant to be a friendly teacher, but his mood and behavior sours when the player inevitably answers math questions incorrectly. If Baldi's Basics belongs in the mascot horror genre is something that can be debated, but I think it still deserves a brief mention due to how it takes something meant to be for kids and turning it around, while Baldi is also very recognizable in the face of the game, hence kind of a mascot. Other easier to categorize games are Hello Puppets, a VR game about puppets from a children's TV show, and My Friendly Neighborhood, a non-VR game about puppets from a children's TV show. There's also Duck Season, a game that takes the dog from the NES game Duck Hunt and turns him into a killer but only if you shoot him first. You get the gist by now. The genre has grown a lot in just a few years, and it seems to just keep going, even past the gaming scene. Ultimately, there seemed to be a certain trend. Mascots equal success, either in regards to monetization or having YouTubers play your games. I'm not saying that this was the main motivator for all the devs who made mascot horror games, well, most of them. But the point is, the genre grew to be a very popular one in many aspects, and subsequently led to lots of games being made within it. It's not just games that have utilized the recent popularity of the genre either. Filmmakers of all audience sizes have taken to it as well, ranging from YouTubers that have created short films based off of FNAF, to feature films, such as the Banana Splits movie and Willy's Wonderland starring Nick Cage. The creators of Willy's Wonderland claimed that the script was written years before the release of Five Nights at Freddy's, but it's worth posing the question how well the movie, let alone the genre as a whole, would have fared if it wasn't for FNAF's success. Maybe mascot horror would have still been nothing more than a trope, only used in games every once in a while, rarely ever being the main focus. Maybe we would have never seen the dawn of so many other games and ideas coming from the indie dev scene. One thing is for certain, though. It'll be interesting to see where it all goes from here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it, and I would also appreciate if you could like and subscribe. What's your opinion on mascot horror games? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Are you tired of seeing them everywhere? Do you feel like there's not enough yet? Just comment below, tell me everything. If you want to see more videos in this type of format, I do have a few uploaded already, so feel free to check them out. And if you have any suggestions on what you would like to hear me talk about in a future video, please just drop those in the comments as well. Thank you so much again, take care, and hopefully I'll see you around.